Happy, happy midweek. Happy midweek. How Hot are day. you, Jason Smith? Honey, I'm great. Look at us. We're looking like bright, sunshiny Sunshine. day. It may be cold and snowy outside, but girl. We're, we're just bringing you some rays of sunshine. Mm, exactly. Uh, how are you doing? Honey, I'm fine as frog hair. <laughs> you don't know what that means, do you? Honey, that Please. means you're just really, really good. Frog hair? Fine as frog hair, because you know frogs ain't got no hair, so that's really fine. So it's good. It's good. Yeah. We're I'm just teaching. starting out making you get learned today. <laughs> I'm Is learning that? you today. Yeah, you are. I you are. I love when you're here. You know this. I do. And we have some food. Mm -hmm. We do have food. Well, we went out and previewed Taco Week, and it aired yes. last week. Mm -hmm. We've had them in all week. Yeah. Today we have another one. Oh, I can't wait. It's, do you have a twist on your favorite kind of taco? Do I have a twist? Yes. My favorite taco is actually venison or deer meat, as we like to call it here in Kentucky. So, yeah, I like a venison taco. Yeah. Okay. that's There you go. Do you, yeah. What do you put on toppings? With, uh, some, toppings? with some deer. What goes with, with deer? With deer meat, I like uh, shredded cabbage that has a real quick pickle, so it's been in a little vinegar. Uh, gives you that spicy kind of tangy, and then to do some, like some radishes and cheese and. That does not sound like Mexican real, food yeah, to me. Yeah, radishes actually and cabbage on tacos is actually the true Mexican taco. I will take the chips and salsa <laughs> <laughs> and make it spicy. Please. Little guacamole on my dear mate. Oh, a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd have to smother that. Yeah. Although uh, we're just gonna move on because. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some a lot of people probably that sounds fantastic. Yeah, I could make deer meat or venison, and you'd never know the. It's difference. very healthy. It's I'm, very I'm healthy. not making fun of you. Yeah. I can't lie and say there's <laughs> been some deer meat in my freezer for. <laughs> All right, let's talk pancakes because I can talk those better. I'm kind of picking up on yeah. your language now. Yeah, you're getting better. It's getting better. What well, we've started better. at the mm -hmm. end of December. Yes. We're now three months in. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm becoming a little more Kentucky fied. Yeah, you're coming a little bit more Kentucky fied. I mean, you're throwing some of the hard ones out there, like finest frog hair. Yeah. And but, that, you know. But you say it right. See, you're picking it up better than what you think you are. Boys, Listen. you better watch out. Girl, <laughs> they coming for you. All right. Mm. Let's talk pancakes. Oh, let's talk let's pancakes. Just, I let's love just, pancakes. Me too. Yeah. It's like fluffy big ones. Yeah, fluffy big ones, you know, big little ones. thin ones. There's all different kinds of pancakes. There are. Yeah. Well, what about the stuff that goes like inside and on pancakes? Are you particular about that? No, because a pancake is a vehicle that you can do anything with. Because you can make a pancake either sweet or you can make it savory. Well, you're going to buckle up for these... Uh, <laughs> toppings. A lot of them have fruits and nuts yeah. in them, like you yeah. said. However, there are two combinations that are currently floating around social media that are sparking some debate. One person posted about pairing pancakes, this might be up your alley, with gravy. Yeah, it depends on what kind of gravy it is. Oh, Lord. And the other, tuna. Well, I'm not sure about Oh, that. it's rolled up? Oh, well, but, that's just not that weird, is it? Yeah, that's not that weird, but now I will have to say, this is not like a true, true, fluffy southern pancake that you're seeing here with tuna. This is more like a uh, tortilla pancake. So this is probably a savory pancake. So you think that's good? Yeah, that's Well, good. do you think that they put like cheese and stuff and make it like, is no, that called a tuna, tuna melt? Not I thought that's tuna. a tuna melt. Don't you put cheese on tuna? Well, you do, but you, I, I'm not a big tuna and cheese fan. I'm not a big fish fan with cheese. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Do you prefer cheese? <laughs> we're, we're really breaking things down. Yeah, tuna or albacore? Albacore. Yeah, because that, that, I don't yeah. like that look. Now, this is like tuna that we used to use back when we was a child making tuna salad is what that is. Well, I mean, that might be yeah. good to some people. It might Let's, be. Let's have focus on yeah. gravy now okay. on your pancakes. So the gravy on the pancakes in the picture that we have here is actually, if you look at it really close, that is a cornmeal. Do we milk. have that picture, the one with the gravy? Yeah, it was on before, right, the, right before the tuna picture. There. there you go. Okay, so if you look at this pancake, this is actually a cornmeal pancake. And I can tell that just by the way that it's brown. Okay. Because a cornmeal pancake doesn't get that solid gold top on it like a regular pancake. Okay. What is a regular pancake? So a regular pancake is just like flour, sugar, eggs, vanilla, uh, like that. Whereas a cornmeal pancake is flour, cornmeal, eggs, and that's about all you have in it. A little melted butter. So you're not getting a lot of oils and fats in those pancakes to make them brown correctly. And that's what you're seeing here. With this the gravy. is the cornmeal, yeah, with gravy. And that gravy is more like a red-eye gravy. That's not <laughs> like a, a sausage gravy. 
Who knew this was a science? I'm telling you. Listen, it's I don't think this is as weird, but I will just no. take all the whipped cream on my pancakes, and you can yeah. have the gravy and the tuna. Okay, I'm a gravy person. So Honey, you'll take that? Yeah, I'll take the gravy. Yeah. I want sprinkles, <laughs> and I'm like a little kid with my pancakes. Like, you need to make some faces yeah. on it and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it needs to be like a birthday cake. No, oh, I love them like that. Yeah. Yeah, even okay. like a Dutch babies. Dutch baby pancake, you bake it in a cast iron and it's real thick side and you just fill it up like a, uh, you know, whipped cream oh, and berries. Okay. At first I was going to say that sounds like it could be a bad idea. No, you'd love Dutch I don't Dutch know if babies. you should be yeah. skittling up <laughs> Dutch baby. I'll fix you some Dutch baby. But if there's whipped cream on it, I'm in. Yeah, it's got whipped cream on it. All right, let's yeah. talk about menus now. Okay. Like real menus. Real Not ones. the actual what's on the menu, yeah. but how the menu is written or the font. Okay. The actual look of it yeah. all. Yeah, I could see Did where you Did you know going. that the menu at your favorite restaurant, or any restaurant, I guess, could be influencing your choices that you make there? And no, we're not talking about the food. A new study found that people who eat at health focused restaurants definitely pay attention to the restaurant. Restaurants claim they live up to their reputation if the menu features a handwritten font style. Also, that means you're more likely to post pictures of your food on Instagram. And apparently this is true because people are more interested in eating clean. What do you think true. of that? So, yeah, you know, I think they are right on the money with this. I, thinking about it, think about the last time you was at a restaurant. You see different types of fonts, and usually their, uh, their signature dishes is always in a different font or a different color. And sometimes there is menus that have handwriting, and it'll usually be like a typed name, but then it'll be handwritten what the description is. What do, does that make you like the restaurant better? Do you think higher of it? Do you think they're being bougie? What, no, what do I don't. You think? I don't think they're being bougie. I think that they're. It, look, to me, it's more love in what they're getting because they've taken the time to handwrite those menus. Right. And it may just be one that they've handwrote and then they Make copy copies. it. But still yet, they took the time to handwrite it, and so therefore it makes me feel like that the dishes are going to be even better because they have more love in what they're doing. And they're really making the restaurant come to life. That's what the restaurant claimed because that yeah. menu we were looking at, apparently yeah. a woman who works there writes the menu up every morning and makes yeah. copies, and they feel like they're doing it with more love. Yeah. Does it make you order more food? Do you spend more money? Well, honey, you're asking the wrong person because when I go in a restaurant, I order one of everything. Well, so, that's, yeah. wh why haven't we done this yet? I don't know, but I'm that, you know, I go into restaurants and I want to try everything. So I'm like, make it a smaller portion, but give me these six options. Uh, and then you're we do a genuine big, foodie. Yeah, yeah. So the menu does not even matter. Yeah, you don't I even look need at a the menu. menu. I look at the menu, okay. yeah. yeah. Let us know what you think. These yeah. stories are up on Facebook. <laughs> we want to know one, what you prefer on your pancakes. Yep. Two, if you're down for trying some tuna. Or some venison in your pancake. Yeah, yeah. No, that's venison taco. We don't want that on a pancake. Listen, no. some people might. Well, you never know. Why venison not? and gravy. You go from good. dinner to breakfast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, we want to know about the menu. If yeah. you ever kind of check out the menu and find yourself judging the restaurant. Yeah, I want to see what y'all think about that. All right, since we <laughs> talked gravy and pancakes, let's talk about taking care of ourselves. There's oh, always yes. a new trend, right? There's always a new trend. All right. Sometimes we think we're taking mm -hmm. better care of ourselves than we really are. We have a list of myths that doctors say really make them cringe. All right, ready? Mm, Number yeah. one. The more water you drink, the better, or overhydrating can kill you. Mm. I'm one of those, I drink a lot of water, so I'd say it's, you know, water is a natural cleanser for right. the body, so I think you should drink a lot of water. And I agree with that. I, I don't think there's yeah. many, you know, every now and then you hear the very, very odd yeah. death that somebody drank too much water, but I really think your your uh, risk is pretty minimal. Yeah, yeah and it, only if you're drinking it and it goes into your lungs, I think it can kill you. Other than that, I don't think so. so. Well, I say keep drinking water. Yeah, I do too. What about number two? Juice diets or other detox work. That's what health, healthy kidneys and livers are for. That's exactly right. I'm one of those that I think that you should do detoxes every now and then, but I don't think it's a constant because as long as our liver is healthy and our kidneys are healthy, that's what they're in our body for is to filter out all the, all the nasty stuff that's going in our bodies. Well, I think probably a good detox if you've been putting a lot of nasty stuff in your body, yeah. like say a lot of alcohol, no judgment, yeah. Yeah. maybe a juice diet for the week. or I, I can't even get through a day, but I do juice. Yeah. I have a juicer. And we were actually talking about this with Amanda Nyberg earlier yeah. this week. Um, the celery juice yes, is a big I thing do that now. One. 
Okay, and that's, she said you don't have to do it all day long. You no. just do one in the morning yep. and it kind of oomphs up your yeah, body. Yeah, I, I like to detox. Like if I've been on a long film, like let's say we're filming for three weeks and we're eating dishes and judging Craft dishes services, constantly. services, yum. Yeah, so I feel like when I get done that I need to do at least one day of detox just to get my body back on track of what I'm used to. So yes, I do believe in that, but some people want to do it. You all know, all time. day, right. every day, and that's not healthy for their bodies. So. I want chips by I know you all think I'm a doctor now, but I'm not. All right. So. <laughs> exercising your way to a six-pack. Oh, doesn't girl. happen, right? It doesn't happen because I've been exercising for years, and I've got a 12-pack. So. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. abs are made in the kitchen, so you have to get that fat. That's right, yeah. All right, here's another one. You know, we doctors are saying these aren't good, and we're like, yeah, yeah. they're good. They're good. Yeah. Um, cardio. Do lots of cardio to lose weight? I, cardio works for me. Yeah. But, Running? And it should because what cardio does is it boosts, it boosts everything in your body. It makes your heart work. It makes your blood flow faster, so it does work out all the, the fat cells. Dr. Jason is saying, continue your cardio if you'd like to lose weight and of course here's the favorite you can diagnose yourself from information on the internet uh, I'm not wild about diagnosing myself on from the internet because even though it's on the internet doesn't mean that it's true well this is what I have found if you diagnose yourself from the internet inevitably <laughs> every symptom yeah. you're gonna die you're yes. gonna die or you're yep. gonna be in the hospital for a long time yep so one or the other that's that's the way it goes listen you yep. can either choose to listen to us or the doctors <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking there's probably a real smart path yeah, there. Yeah, I think there's a smart probably path. Probably not us. Yeah.